now for the shop report with What up, sports fans? Welcome to the Shop Report. I'm Barbershop J. I'll be your host for the day. Here's what's happening. Yes, indeed. We are now at the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, and uh, we will break down some of the action for you going in this Saturday and Sunday. Got a few questions, too, I'd like to throw out here to my co-host today. Uh, also, why is Tyson Furious? That's right, Tyson Fury. That's Tyson Furious. <laughs> Tyson Fury had a lot to say about some of his heavyweight counterparts. We'll get to that as well. But first, let's talk about this Anthony Davis turning down a $146 million extension to play with the Lakers and the people's champion, the King. Joining me on the program today to discuss this and the rest of our topics is none other than my man from the NYC, a.k.a. Ohio State, Brother Rich, no longer from the Rucker Park. How about that? Brother Rich, what's happening? Man, I'm always honored. I'm always humbled to be on the program. Man, it's you know I'm always honored to be with the King of Cowboy Nation. It's just a blessing to be with you, Mr. Jones. Oh, so you you must you must be uh, blessed to be with yourself, huh? <laughs> you and Jerry, Stephen, brother Rich A. Jones, got you. And on the other side of the ledger, we got my man from up north, Joey James, A.K.A. Double J. Tell the people what you say. You know, you always say wear those boots because it's getting thick in the Fort Worth stockyard. <laughs> you know what, man? You and Brother Rich, you know what? Y'all gonna have to be like Thelma and Louise, not literally, but figuratively. In that, at the end, y'all just rolled off the cliff. How about that? How about y'all riding the drop top instead of going south? Uh, excuse me, north for the Super Bowl. How about just go south off the cliff? How about that? And then on the on the last side of things, we got my man from up on the south side, actually. From the CO Lum bus, D Gully, D Gully, what's the dealio, son? Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome, welcome back. Glad to be back. Glad to be with you guys. Ready to get right to it. I wish all three of y'all would save save some time. We could save a whole lot of time on the overextended, overcompensatory soliloquies. Ha <laughs> ha, you like that? Anywho, let's talk about this A D, as in Anthony Davis, turning down this $146 million extension or offer. From the Lakers. Now, this is per Bleacher Report, of course. He turned it down, as I said, a four-year, $146 million offer. They say also that no one expects AD to leave. And then we all know that uh, Anthony Davis is eligible for a five-year max this summer. Double J, we'll start with you. Is there any, I mean, wow. what, is, is there anything to read into that AD turning down this $146 million offer with the Lakers in your estimation? Absolutely. You can look at this from a number of perspectives. You could say that, well, maybe he believes they need a third superstar. And by accepting that contract, that makes that almost impossible. And unless, you know, Jenny Buss and the rest of that gang are, are willing to take on the luxury tax, which Look, of course, they more than likely would be willing to, but it keeps it cap friendly for the franchise, depending on how this season plays out. But I'm going to play devil's advocate here because this is how I really think it's happening. He knows he's not drinking that Kool Aid anymore. And when he you knows say, they have a two year window. Okay, when you say, but well, he's not drinking that Kool Aid. Oh, okay. Don't 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 lead that to the imagination. When you say uh, he's not drinking that Kool Aid no more, be specific, please. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. What's he, already understood he, need not uh, be explained. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so <laughs> Kyle Kuzma may have gave us a, a a bird's eye view of how that locker room situation is. And I'm telling you right now, when you're struggling to beat the Pistons, the, the what, 13-win Pistons, that doesn't scream NBA champ. I can't recall, uh, other than in the NBA Finals, and the Pistons were far more competitive then <laughs> with that roster. Yeah. 
that was the only time I've seen the Lakers struggle with them uh, other than, you know, again, we're talking a handful of years, Yeah. but I, I, you know, he's leaving his options open. He knows, look, this is my chance. He's still a young, you know, young player. He can go wherever he wants. Hmm. Yeah, but you know, should he choose to walk away? If things don't, you got to remember these guys are, as you've stated plenty of times, these guys are human and they're being force fed this, soliloquy from LeBron (laughs) and at some point there is a little bit of a generational gap at this stage LeBron's in his mid-30s here ah that's a good point that's a good point yeah but you know what too and and brother Rich I want to ask you you of course being out there in LA 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 Land Hollywood have we not seen this movie before I've asked this. I've asked. Well, the, absolutely. Yeah, I've asked the question on this program how many countless times about this guy. Nobody's questioning LeBron being a talent and what he did for the league and yada 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 and blah blah blah. But as a guy put a post up on Facebook earlier today about the LeBron effect, he mentioned all of those things that would favor. And he's the, he's a pre law major. I'm not going to mention his name. I said, well, counselor, you being pre-law, you should understand that to, in, to in order to say what the LeBron effect is, you can't just point to all the things that would make your client look favorable. But my bad, as, as, as all attorneys, the case with all attorneys or most attorneys anyway, it ain't about what's right and what's wrong. It's about wins and losses. You're just trying to make the case for to make it look like so that you didn't won this argument, so to speak. And it's not the case. All I'm saying is, who has he made better? Brother Rich, help me out here, man. What's what's I mean? What's the deal here? What's going on? We've seen this movie before. Well, I, I'm not. I, I, we we definitely seen it before. I, I'm not going to go over what Double J said. I think we have to look at what Double J said from a basketball point of view and say, yes, that's very much a point of view that that he could definitely be looking at it like, okay, what what do we have here? What are we looking at playing with in the future? Where where am I? Where should I be looking for my basketball future? But I think it's more troubling what he did in fact say to close out his point. And that is that, look, man, something's going on here. What Kuzma indicated to us that something is going on here. And there are people that understand, and we said this, you, we said this on this very same program, pull the tape, that back, back uh, at the beginning of the season, we said we expected Kyle Kuzma to be off this team before the All-Star, or by All-Star game. Yeah. Right? Here <laughs> yeah. it is, we're faced yeah. with that right now. Because that's a fact. Here, here it is, we're faced with that right now. Here's what's going on. What we have to understand about playing with LeBron is that what, what, what Kyrie understood, Kevin Love understood, what they discovered in Miami, what D. Wade understood. What players have had to understand is when you play with LeBron, LeBron is a force within himself. He is the most powerful entity that has been in the NBA probably since, absolutely since Michael Jordan, and his light has eclipsed Michael Jordan just for the fact that he exists in a generation where we got social media and we, we can be on ESPN 24 hours a day and people can be on Instagram with you. So he, he's a very he's very much a force of nature in terms of his marketability and what he represents as, to, as an NBA basketball player and certainly his skill set. So LeBron, playing with LeBron is a challenge, and that's just what it is. And you're not going to get around that. And so okay, but wait a minute. Let me a say. particular type of player. He, but, but let me say this. Did, now, let me, I just want to close it out by saying this. Go ahead. And remember now, Anthony Davis is growing into his own as his own kind of player right now. He's becoming, all, for all intents and purposes, his own man. He might be looking at he wants to have his own team. And for the, for the time that LeBron is here, we know whose team this will be. Yeah, but you know what, and that's and that's all interesting points. But let me say this though, and then Gully will come to you. This you, when you say you said he eclipsed Jordan, the, let me t- the difference between social media or not. Okay, we can speak from the standpoint or from the premise. We saw Jordan and we seen LeBron. Okay, we've seen this modern era. Okay, so we we have something more concrete than just highlights and numbers to to compare them to or to go off of. He is a guy who has to be catered to the Lake Show, dude. Jordan was the guy who, if he got in your backside, it was for the reasons of being, I need you to be complimentary. It's a difference. 
and this is not against you, Bro Rich or Double J or Gully, what you ever you about to say. All I'm saying is, at the end of the day, for a guy who has said arguably to be so much better than everybody else who ever did it, because that's the way his Debron apologies is what I call him. That's the way they talk. Why is he always in so much need of help? Why is it that again? And we said this on the show too. Why is it because we talk about Kobe, we talk about Duncan, we talk about Jordan, we talk about Bird, we talk about Magic. None of the other players who are even mentioned in the conversation that this guy is in, I have, I don't recall ever having saying that. Get rid of this guy and then let me go get this guy. Did none of them dudes do that? Whoever was there at the time, they was. Kobe couldn't wait for Shaq to go so he could show y'all, y'all, I, I, I can do this. And he went and got two. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Meanwhile, no, listen. Right. These dudes that's, that's so-called Lakers fans, they're not Lakers fans. They're LeBron fans. And they're trying to talk like they've been Lakers fans since they was 19 or 9 or 8 or before they came out the womb. Bull. This bull. Man, look what I tell you. Don't, don't put no powder sugar on a pile of dog. I've been going to try to convince me it's a funnel cake. You have, you make everybody else better. That's part of his narrative. Then why you keep why you got to get rid of somebody in order to bring somebody else in, but you make everybody else better. That's a contra freaking diction, a oxy freaking moron. Oh, anything that's, that is, it don't it doesn't make sense, man. Somebody please on this panel today tell me how that makes sense. Gully, makes sense out of what I just. Because you've heard the narrative, too. We've been going over this over and over and over and over again. Help me make some – what am I missing, if anything? You're you're missing nothing. You can't make sense of the illogical. Oh. So I'm not even going to try. Appreciate it. I, I, I'm going to start trekking, um, too. I like Star Trek, so, too. Spock, yeah. baby, Spock. Go so ahead. <laughs> so, so, first of all, the question to him, you know, what to make of Anthony Davis declining that offer. He simply put that doesn't want to be bound. I don't know that it. I, I think it's an indictment. It seems like it's an indictment on LeBron James. But understand Anthony Davis' situation. He was he was with New Orleans and he felt like he couldn't win. He wasn't successful there. LeBron James or not, he don't want to be put in a situation like that again. Consider this. Uh, I don't know how long LeBron's contract is or whatever. I guess it lasts it lasts longer than Anthony Davis as, as a Laker. But the idea of it is he wants to make sure he is not in that situation during the prime of his career where he's with a franchise that's languishing. You want to see how how effective he is with the Lakers, if they make it to the finals, if they win a championship. And that don't mean anything either because, if I'm not mistaken, it was the year that the Cavs won a championship that we heard rumors about LeBron James one of the uh, one of the, the front office of the Cavs to shop Kyrie Irving. So that means nothing about winning the title you. one. You know, and longevity. The the idea of it is he he wants to make sure that all exits are available. He is not going to trap himself inside that room. But you you know what else is interesting about all of this too? Out of all them players that everybody wanted to say he's so much better than and so on and so forth. I don't recall even, and I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm don't because I, I don't remember everybody that played with Mike or you know everybody that played with Bird and Kobe and so on and so forth. But when when those guys were the guy, so to speak, okay, it don't have to necessarily be their league, but the guys on their squad, right? It's their team, if you would. Even though we wasn't using that terminology back then, because it was like everybody ball, let's ball. But anyway. Double J, you and Gully might be able to speak to this, and maybe you too, brother, it's more so than I can, believe it or not. Um, name me a time when some other players who had a chance to maybe go somewhere else and could get maybe more money or whatever the case, and they, they was playing alongside Jordan or with Jordan or with Kobe and was and was ready to make them, and it was already coming out talking about, no, nah, I'm, I'm ready to go. Name me a player. Every other player that played with them other as guys. Matter, as a matter of fact, the only one I can think of. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Gully. Go ahead. Yeah, the only one. No, no, hold on, Gully. Go ahead, Brother Rich. As a matter of fact, people wanted to play with. You got angry when you got traded from the Bulls. Thank you. Zach was angry when he got traded from the Lakers. You got angry when you got traded from those kind of teams, from the Detroit the... Pistons even. Thank when, you. Remember, Mark Aguirre and, and, and is one of his best friends fell out because 
he was traded from that championship squad. Yes, fact. Thank you. Thank you. Who don't want to play with Bron? Why has everybody got to – listen, it's already been chronicled. Kevin Love got head issues. Kyrie got head issues. I mean, I'm just – and I, this ain't no knock on them as players. I'm just saying, why is it that it's like – it's like – you remember the whole the Civil War and all that and Sherman's March and so on and so forth. Why is it that his body's in this dude's wake? I don't understand that. But everybody wants to talk about he led bums and all of this kind of stuff. Well, if they... No, no, no. You asked the wrong question, Jay. Okay, you so maybe, the wrong question, maybe I did. Well, then what should have been the right question? Why, why are the most notable superstars affected by LeBron James tenure, his teammates? Okay, so be it. I stand correctable. <laughs> Shoot. Okay. <laughs> See, that's, but, that's a, but you know you know something, Kelly? That's exactly the question. And here's why, Jay, because this is what I answered to you initially when I responded. The fact is, the fact does remain. See, those people were described, the gully pointed out to us, those are all superstars in their own right. And the fact remains that I'm sorry to, to, to any LeBron apologist or people who may, like, who may not like LeBron, well, the fact remains that LeBron James has been the most popular basketball player in the history of the NBA. He is the biggest light that has manifested in the NBA. Just no, it's a fact. I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't know about no, no, that. No, 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 no. We're not talking basketball. No, no. Listen, we're not talking. You talking about persona? I'm not talking on the court. Michael Jordan is the GOAT. We're talking persona and marketability okay. Okay. and what has been done with his image and who he became and, the, and what his image. Because remember, Michael Jordan, we had the, we had MJ and who he became and Ed Jordan and what that remains today in terms of that branding. But in terms, and then we had Kobe come along with the Mamba brand. But in terms of what the king and what he is brand became to this, this is why you just talked about it. These new generation fans, who, and this is why it, it's an emotional generation that to them LeBron is the goat. They don't, they don't even have respect for Michael Jordan, much less Kobe Bryant or uh, or anybody else who came before that. So I, I think we, we got to deal with the generation that we're dealing with, and to them it's LeBron's world, it's LeBron kingdom. LeBron is well aware of that. Everybody knows LeBron who moves the NBA needle. Let's be honest, in advertising dollars. In marketability, LeBron right now moves, still continues to move the NBA needle. We started this our program today talking about I rest my case. Yeah, but guess what? I'm not even disputing that he moves the NBA needle. That's obvious. My thing is, I want his the fans of his or to act, stop acting like um, he the only player to ever do anything, and all the other cats before him. He ain't. They ain't. They don't even. Like, huh? Who? What? What? Stop! Stop! Like he's so much better than everybody else who ever done anything in the NBA. Like the NBA didn't start till he came on the scene. That's what I'm. I'm, I'm talking about the over gushing. I mean, my gosh, the way some of these dudes be talking, I be. I'm I be like, here, man. You don't even need no tissue. You need a roll of paper towels to wipe your mouth. My gosh. My gosh, this stuff is sickening. But yeah, I mean, you know. Most folks saying, yeah, well, he going to re-sign Anthony Davis, that is. Well, he turning that down so he can sign a five-year max. With the but do the Lakers, Double J, do the Lakers have five? Can they offer him a, a max deal? Because if he turned it down 146, then some, yeah. I mean, it's got to be something with north of what, 200? I thought they was cash cap strapped. Well, correct. Well, if they, they can, um, if you look at they had a lot of expiring contracts. Uh, that was even determined kind of pre the, the pre deal to just to get them. They were getting, they were shedding a lot of cap space, uh, or at least uh, just what I would call dead money, you know, so future, future cap. Um, they don't have the, the, the draft pick. So you don't have to set aside a certain amount of money for that either. Um, so if you look at it again, Kuzma's making $2 million this year. Uh, you got a lot of vet minimums on there, uh, like Boogie Cousins. Again, that's also an expiring deal at this point. Other than guys like KCP, you know, he, he's somebody that makes a decent salary. Uh, but, yeah, they can afford it. Yeah. Well, I'll say this two things before we move on. One, 
all the conversation prior to the season or surrounding this talk when first, when first came out, Anthony Davis was trying to go to the Lakers. We all know the, the snafu with Rich Paul and the Dale Demps and so on and so forth. The one guy's name in all of the pieces at the time that was discussed when it was discussed the Lakers were going to get rid of in order to get AD, Kuzma's name initially was in the it was being offered, if I'm not mistaken. I do believe it was initially. But then once it fell through, they came back and it was everybody else's name, right. Ball, Hart, and all them was in, and Ingram was included. But Kuzma, they was like, no, 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 because he going to be. So in other words, when. All the fans I had all this conversation about, oh, Kuzma going to be that third option. Are we going to the ship? And should it? Now here it is. We ain't even at the All-Star break. And y'all talking about getting rid of the guy? Man, I wish y'all would make up my mind. I wish y'all would make up my mind. I wish y'all would make up my mind. And then, two, when it comes to the Lakers and surrounding this dude, I'm going to continue to say what I've been saying. Imagine, and especially to his fans, the Brown apologists, imagination ain't the same as truth. If you're up and around, you're out and about, and you want to give us a shout, the number to call is area code 267-687-0026. That number again is area code 267-687-0026. All right, let's talk about some of these NFL divisional round playoff games, fellas. Yes, indeed, Gully, we're going to come at you. In the AFC or on the AFC side of things, we got up first, Titans at the Ravens. Gully, how you see this playing out? <clears throat> Oh, um, oh, um, Titans so you want to need paying attention? The, you ain't even yeah, listening Titans to the show. Are the how no, are you? No, no, I need to say it. How are I you? First, no, no, no. Uh -uh. How is it that photo. you're on the show and you're, not, and you're not listening to the show? Unbelievable. Keep going. Hey, you know what? No, I don't know. You know what? Brother know. Rich. Yeah, you, Brother, Brother Rich, Rich, and Double J. Y'all can I all. Go save them all for you. Y'all can you all go fly a See, kite. This is what happens. Yeah. This is what happens when cowboy fans want to. got to find some way to take my oh, people down. You know? Cowboys uh, don't worry. Man, don't worry about Cowboys. Fans. Say, don't worry about Cowboys fans. Worry about Browns fans and why the Browns are searching for their 88th head coach in 18 minutes. What were you going to say now? Oh, yeah, but oh no, the uh, Titans. Um, they did surprise me in particular. I guess you guys caught that pretty, pretty, uh, pretty accurately. They surprised me. Um, that's gonna be a real tough test, you know. Uh, th let's not look at the records for me because everybody's undefeated. You know what I'm saying? And, and going into a matchup in the playoffs, um, I still like the Ravens, but if they can't, if they don't really have an effective uh, uh, strategy to stop uh, Derrick Henry, it's gonna be. Get ready for another shocker, because I think they, they they can do something very effective with the uh, with running the ball and controlling the clock the way they can. Um, I, that being said, I still like the Ravens because I still think that as much as the X factor as Derrick Henry might be for the Titans, uh, Lamar Jackson in what should be his MVP year uh, is even that much more. Um, case in point, I like to point out a game real quickly. Uh, where he had 100 yards rushing and 100 yards passing, and they still won, and it looked like a dominant performance. That right there was such low volumes of passing yards, rushing yards. It would seem like rather paltry, but the fact of the matter is, he did just enough where he kept you by, he kept you at surprise the entire time because you couldn't say he beat you with his arm because he really didn't, and you couldn't say he beat you with his legs because he really didn't. That sort of uh, bait and switch, that those sort of tactics, if you will, his ability to do that hands and arms. <laughs> Um, or, or running it with his arms, that's going to be effective. I like the Ravens in it. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting tidbit about the Titans. You know they are, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm reading my notes here, the highest defensive red zone efficiency or the highest defensive red zone efficiency team. Am I saying that right? Yeah, you all get what I'm saying. Yeah, they got the highest yeah, efficiency. Yeah, basically they bid but don't break. Yeah, I, yeah. well, I mean, you know, the Browns used to be like that for a while <laughs> until Brother Rich and <laughs> Double J <laughs> happened. And, and like I say to, the, to my two esteemed co-hosts, uh, until y'all done lived it, <laughs> you'll never know. Anywho, uh, Double J, what say you? Titans at the Ravens. I'm, I'm going to kind of mention the possible trap game here. I actually think both of these on the uh, AFC side can be. But uh, it, it's going to come down to ball control. <clears throat> Here's the thing. Derrick Henry is, is a man possessed. He's the Derrick Henry that I have known since Alabama. Uh, 
And boy, I tell you, following if he can repeat that performance, this game will be a lot closer than most think. The reason why is Mike Vrabel is very good defensively. Uh, if you were, you know, flashbacks his playing days, um, that was the anchor to this team and why they were even in the playoff conversation before the switch with Tannehill. Yeah. Tannehill was simply, you know, I would say a, a better version of, of Philip Rivers. Um, but ultimately Whoa. here, that's saying a lot. We all you, you can't stop. Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I don't think so either. And so, but the, what do you always say when it comes to great players? The best, you know, offense is, 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 or best defense is actually on your offense. Yeah, keeping the other guy on the the field. (laughs) I mean, on the sideline, yeah. Absolutely. And so, well, there's no better way of doing that in the NFL than running the ball efficiently. And so they're going to load the box. Uh, I will say this. So the receiving core that Ryan Tannehill has is actually the best he's ever had in his career. They're very underrated guys uh, between, you know, Brown, Davis, and Sharp. They were all drafted early. And because of Marcus Mariota, they seem like, you know the Buffalo Bills receiving core, um, but they're not. Yeah, did they're I... all capable guys that can catch the ball. So the Baltimore has to be very careful, even though they have guys like Earl Thomas, who who did take to Twitter and say that the Patriots were not willing to tackle. They were scared to tackle Derrick Henry. Is basically what he said. Yeah. Well, and we know the we know the Ravens are not going to be, be scared to tackle Derrick Henry. We we know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, uh, so I'm, I'm intrigued to see, you know, pay very close attention to when that A gap opens up and you got an Earl Thomas going, you know, looking through and coming down, bearing down on a full speed Derrick Henry. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. But uh, a couple things. One, I'm, I'm kind of impressed at how Derrick Henry is, is the first Alabama running back that I can recall who's had this type of success in the NFL and has been there long enough to have this kind of success. Two, uh, I don't know if we've ever mentioned this on the show before. If we did, uh, excuse me for being redundant, if we didn't, you're hearing it here now. Uh, you know, uh, Tannehill was a former wide receiver at Texas A&M, so I, I find that quite impressive for a guy to, who, to play, to switch positions. I don't know when he switched the position, but it was sometime during his Texas A&M, and then when he got drafted by the Dolphins. Well, did he get drafted by the Dolphins? I think he got drafted by the Dolphins. But anyway, I know it wasn't too far when he got – he wasn't hadn't been a quarterback for too long when he got drafted. So I'm impressed with that, you know what I mean? Because he understands that – I just think it's an asset when you've played that – you've played two positions or have played those two positions, you know what I mean? Quarterback and wide receiver. So he understands, you know, that wide receiver, you know. So he on his – page with his wide receivers like some quarterbacks are not on the same page with their wide receivers and just because again I think he played the position and then um, lastly you mentioned Earl Thomas you know I, I don't know if with the, that Ravens front seven you he, he gonna and this is no knock against Henry because he is he has been doing his one too uh, but it's gonna be quite difficult that Ravens the Ravens are solid on at every level <laughs> they just are that don't mean that the Titans are not, and the more impressed I am, Mike Vrabel outcoached Bill Belichick. He did. I am not saying that, you know, it could happen nine times out of ten, but in that one instance, he did. He outcoached him. So Vrabel is up for the task, I believe, but this is going to be, I think this is going to be the game of the playoffs. I really, really do. I think this is going to go down to the wire because the Ravens, when we talk about tidbits, while the Titans are number one in, in red zone uh, efficiency defensively, on the flip side, the Ravens got the highest offensive red zone efficiency. So, go figure, right? <laughs> Should be a good one. Brother Rich, who you got, Titans or Ravens? Well, that's, a, that's exactly where I was going. I think that what we got to look at, I think the Ravens are a team that's on a mission. I, the, the Titans have proven themselves, certainly, but they've, they've come up against a team that's on a mission. The, the Ravens have something to prove. 
I don't think defensively that's going to be a problem for them because of their history. Actually, you know, I did, this would be a good time to say go Browns. That's actually the Browns. They're going to be, you know, when they win, it'll be Oh, Browns would winning. you give go it Brownies. a respite? But, you know, uh, uh, but nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that, yes, absolutely, the Ravens. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. How about them Cowboys, by the way? The Baltimore Browns? Or the brother Richard Cowboys. I don't know. Saints. I don't know. Uh, up next, the Texans at the Chiefs. Gully, who you got? I got the Texans. And you know what? That, I, that, I, I hate to say it. I, 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 like to, I like to see Andy Reid actually. This would be a year for Andy Reid-led team to actually win it, but I just I don't know, man. I, I like the Texans. The Texans showed a lot. Uh, last week, I don't think that they're subject to make the same mistakes and to get and to fall behind that much, uh, as much like they did last last week. Uh, they do have the they don't have the benefit of being at home, but um, I like what the Texans uh, can do, and I don't think that they're scared about going in the Arrowhead. I, I like the Texans. I don't think so either. And before I mention this quick tidbit on the Chiefs, let me just say Deshaun Watson did what. We, when we on this program, we were discussing what separates this these types of players from other types of players. He was playing horribly for the first three quarters in that game. Then all of a sudden, he went to another level. Matter of fact, I heard Quentin Richardson say the same thing about Michael Jordan. He said that dude just had a, he had something different. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna tell you, even though we all know Mike had something different, so to speak. And like Deshaun had something different the other last week. At the end of the day, man, the guys we always talking about that we favor or that I favor over other guys, it's one thing you can say about them that's common. It's a common thread. They did not wilt in the moments that will forever be remembered. Deshaun Watson came through. Some cats would have been down at home or not at home, and they would have went on ahead and tucked their tail or got carried off by Juwan. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's on football. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know what I mean? He didn't wilt. Yeah, right. Yeah, the, your boy got you. Save it. Uh, but, no, he didn't wilt. So, yeah, kudos to Deshaun. But I will say this about the Chiefs. You know, they, they are 1-7 and seven at home in the playoffs since 1995. <laughs> Good luck, Andy. <laughs> we all know what Andy Reid's track record is in the playoffs. Purred. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I like Andy. You know, Andy's got a nice bushy mustache. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like that beard Brother Rich used to have before he cut it. I used to tell him all the time when he came to shop, bro, at, at some point, man, I wish you would just skin the bear first before you eat it. You know what I'm saying? Skin the bear first, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't get a chuckle, huh? But Brother Richard say, Dude, Jay, you got your cowboy shoes on backwards. Uh, ka, 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 ka. Anywho. Uh, Brother Rich, who you got? Oh, 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 oh nice to chuckle. Well, well I, I would ask you, how many of those games that you just referred us to were, were, were Pat Mahomes? Then? Because, you know, if he weren't in, in too many of them, I'll, I'll, I think I'll take my chances with him. Yeah, it's but a Andy, Kansas City team, and I think he's a different player. Yeah, okay, and that's fair. Nevertheless, but but I, yeah, nevertheless, I, 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 Andy Reid is in the game we too. We heard what you said about. What, we heard what you said about. Yes, but he's not playing. However, and he, he I, wasn't I, playing I, in I the last say, zero for nine. He hey, wasn't. Right? I, again, I ask you, how many of those games were Pat Mahomes? Okay, none. But Andy Reid was in them. So I okay, man, Andy Reid had Donovan McNabb and Terrell hey. Owens. Stop it. Uh, Double J, who you got? Dak Prescott not going to be in them. <laughs> Neither is Baker Mayfield either. <laughs> Why are you playing? <laughs> you might <it> might, <laughs> you might see uh, Trevor Lawrence up in here and <laughs> let the Browns down. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, anywho. <laughs> keep going. You can't talk smack and your team is smack. Uh, Double J, what say you? Who you got? Texans or Chiefs? Well, you know what? I, I think this the, the Vegas line is, is very deceiving here. It's grown a nine and a half in favor of Mahomes, and people think it can get uh, ugly in a hurry. We, and that goes to show that people are often, uh, they say we're still sleeping on the Bears, uh, I'm sorry, the Bills defense. Um, 
Houston has already beaten Kansas City. And sure has. They've only both teams have gotten help. And we know Andy Reid's track record in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Specifically defensively. And they struggle against the run. I get it that's not the core of Houston's game and getting Will Will Fuller back for this game is absolutely critical. That will be the yes. difference maker. That's yes. my X factor in this game. If Will Fuller plays, not only will that line be within that nine and a half for Houston, yep. but Houston might be win it. Up. Yep. Yep. I say that too. I say that too. Because Watt and Merciless, man, them dudes, they took it, they ratcheted it up. Man, I, I, I can't say I've never seen it, but I, it's, it's been a while since I saw a team that just looked so flat for a huge portion of the game, in a playoff game now, in a playoff game. Then all of a sudden, man, that fourth quarter came. I mean, they had scored a couple of points, like right at, toward, in the, somewhere around in the third or whatever, but you, and then they just, hey, look, I don't, man, Hopkins showed up. <laughs> Deshaun Watson showed out. It, it, that one particular play, I forgot who he threw the ball to. And even Duke Johnson had a little bit of moments in there. You know what I mean? Uh, Deshaun Watson was sacked. Anybody else is sacked on that play? Anybody else? Unbelievable. Anybody else is sacked on that play? And yet and still. But before that, to your point, when – Deshaun Watson willed his way into the end zone. Yeah. J.J. Watt ran down that sideline. It was like he was at the combine again. Yep. (laughs) And they were inspired. Yep. And if if that's what they're bringing into Kansas City, they better be – the Chiefs better better be be careful. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm with that a million percent. I'm not – look – it's a pick 'em for me, to be honest with you. With all due respect to Mahomes, man, I'm not counting Deshaun Watson out for nothing because, if I'm not mistaken, how many how many times did he get sacked in that game? Double J. Deshaun seven. Watson, huh? Yes, seven. 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 I think he had seven sacks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And he still and 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 the team that sacked him seven times. Is sitting at home? Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's a pick em for me, but I ain't betting against him. Uh, over on the NFC side of things, we got the Vikings at the 49ers. Brother Rich, who you got? Well, you got to go with the Bay Area. got to go with – Oh, the, please. Right with them. They're, they're proof. Mm. Absolutely. They're proving themselves, you know, what's happening. And if you go back and pull the tape when you asked us, during the season, were they for real? We said they were. Just as we said that Mahomes, uh, Houston, and Baltimore all are for real. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, uh, and, and Gully will come to you after this the interesting tidbit about the 49ers is twofold. One, they are 4-0 and when they go into the playoffs as a top seed. But then on the flip side, Jimmy G's uh, worst right. Jimmy G's worst statistical game came last season against the Vikings. He threw three interceptions. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know which one we're going to roll with. I don't know which which stat or which tidbit is telling a lie, but, you know, they both might be in play here. You know what I mean? You know, if the 49ers win it, then, you know, they what, they 5-0 and when they go in as the top seed. If they don't win it, then, you know, that's because Jimmy G done tossed up a couple. Don't underestimate that Vikings defense either. You know what I mean? I wonder, though, uh, what the um, the Vikings game plan is for uh, Kittle. Because Kittle. if you take Kittles out the mix, if you – and I believe you, you can. You can scheme for him somewhat more than you could a Gronkowski. But if you can scheme for Kittles, you know, it's real interesting to see who else Jimmy G will go to in that instance. It really, really is. Uh Gully, who you got? 49ers or Vikings? Yeah, I got the Niners. I got the Niners winning this game. Um uh what what happened with Minnesota was able to do last week versus New Orleans. No, what happened is 
you and Brother Richard drinking the same Kool-Aid. That's what happened. What'd you say? Because I really wasn't paying What attention. do you mean? The Kool-Aid of watching the play and understanding that the Saints had to the Saints had the job of yeah, not putting themselves right in the posi- in the predicament. And and again, they did listen, it's almost like, okay, look, the boy's been crying wolf. Now, it just so happens that this is an epilogue to the tale where for all them times he didn't cry wolf, three straight days wolves have come to eat up the sheep. And three straight days, because all the lying he's been doing, nobody came to believe him. That's what's happened. Okay, wait a the minute. Saints had a po- the Saints wait a minute. put themselves the Saints put themselves in the position that they were in last year, where it came down to a play. Like they were in two years ago, where it came down to a play. They had to have enough in them. Drew Brees on down to understand we can't make it about a play. And they and unfortunately, they failed to do it. Or credit to the Vikings, they made sure that it could happen. Oh, guess what? You sound just like I did when I was talking to my brothers after the fake eyes lost to Clemson. All they wanted to talk about was that, did he catch it? Was that a fumble? Did he take two steps? Did he make a football move? Was he Danny Terrio on Dance Fever? You know, look, man, John Travolta ain't coming through that door. <laughs> That's all I'm telling y'all, and I won't say it no more. I'm just saying, you're right. It, you shouldn't, if you are what they say you are, then you go do what LSU did, right? You make the game so out of reach, no matter who call what. <laughs> what the ref do or don't call, it ain't going to matter. Got you. I'm with you on that. The Saints shouldn't have put themselves, hey, if you don't want to be in no it, then don't put yourself in a predicament. I'm with you on that, Gully. That's fair stuff all day long. Meanwhile, though, <laughs> Kirk Cousins is balling and moving on. Yeah, it took OT for me. Double J, who you got, man? Vikings or Niners? Well. Oh, Lord. We can really get a uh, Skip you know, Bayless 25-minute yeah, run on. She I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, with the hometown uh, San Francisco 49ers. Uh, again, the only reason being is Kyle Shanahan's path with Kirk Cousins. Um, uh, to be honest, I didn't think Kirk Cousins could make that play that he did in uh, in overtime. And it turns out the only reason it happened is because uh, Kyle Rudolph pushed off. Yeah, but wait a minute. 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 Wait two, four You minutes. didn't think you didn't. Hey, you, you totally you pushed negated what Alan Thielen been doing all game to put themselves in for position for Kyle Rudolph. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Listen. Listen. On that particular play, Kyle Rudolph indeed pushed off. But if you notice, in the sequence of events within the happened in the end zone before Rudolph got to the end zone and once they got there and all of that, the Saints defender grabbed his arm. See, if we gonna, you got to mention all of it. It's, listen, man, I, I, I just wish the NFL would get this pass interference, either call it consistently or get rid of it. See what I'm saying? Because you know, you just say you know how they, you heard the expression. You all created this monster, all all throughout the sports landscape, right? The rules were changed in, in large part for what? So we could get more what? More scoring. And why? Because of the, there is a direct correlation. We've said this on the show before, between the scoring outbursts or outputs, if you would, NBA, NFL. D- d- did I say NBA? Yeah. Today, NBA. Right? There's a direct correlation between that and what? Gambling. DraftKings. FanDuel. Yeah. Fantasy this. Yahoo that. Yahoo this. They even got fantasy football and basketball. They got shows now. Guys is getting paid off fantasy. Imagination ain't the same as truth. How many times I got to tell y'all? It's all to the G.O. though. <laughs> Yeah, um, Kirk Cousins is moving on. I think that was his last move on, though. I don't think he's going to move on no more than that because, you know, it's going to be tough to go up there in the Bay Area and beat the Golden State 49ers. Right, Brother Rich? No, uh, you, you kind of you kind of sound faint back there. Eating your, oh, it's a bowl of cereal time for you on my oh, back on the West Coast. My, my fault, my fault. Which, which bowl of cereal you eating this time? You know, Brother Richard loves some cereal. What you got? Some uh, Captain Crunch? <laughs> I ain't mad at you, dog. I ain't mad at you. I can't even eat. I can't even eat. It's called Texas, Texas Cowboy. 
Oh, okay. Oh, so you got some beef ribs. That don't go too good with milk, I don't think. I don't know, brother. You might want to back up off that. Um, in, the, in the next game, of course, we got the Seahawks at the Packers. Double J, who you got? Did I come to everybody about the Vikings and the 49ers? Help me out here. I'm having a senior moment. All in favor, say aye. Yes. You did. Okay, thank you. Thank you, brother Rich. Mm-hmm. I, I, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, got you. You must be over there kicking with Andre Drummond, Double J. Sound like y'all sibbing on some zizzer. Uh, anyway, uh, Gully, who you got? Seahawks at Packers. Or did I say Double J? Anyway, Gully, who you got? Seahawks at Packers. Uh, I got oh, that's funny. That's Seahawks. funny, Double J. It's funny. Mm-hmm. Got you. I got the Seahawks. You got the who Hawks? I, the, the I have the Seahawks, actually. You got the Seahawks? this game. Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got you. I don't know why, but okay. Hey, Brother Rich, he's having a uh, Mike McCarthy moment. Uh, yeah. He, oh my gosh! Is is there anything that's not a fact, Brother Rich? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Everything Double J and Gully say is a fact. Anything well, I say, it's got to be Jerry's world. I, I see the bias. I see the discriminatory the nature of your fact. responses. I gotta agree with facts. No, I no oh, facts. oh, spare me the cheese. Uh, yeah, uh, interesting tidbit about the Seahawks. They are eight and eight, eighty-one, <laughs> eight and one, including the uh, wild card uh, on the road. Hmm. Interesting. 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 Uh, who do I go to next? Double J, did you say have your say? No? I'm doing this deliberately now, right? Since we freelancing here today. Y'all just all over the place. Who did I go to? Who did, who picked the Seahawks? Gully? Anyway, Double J, who you got? Seahawks or Packers? <laughs> <laughs> Helen. I'm going to go Seahawks. Oh, boy. Here we go. And you're going Seahawks. Why? I I think I, the I, yeah. from Green Bay have been beneficiaries of of poor officiating and bias. Well, like he said the flip side of what the Saints have been <laughs> what the Saints been getting, huh? <laughs> and the Browns too, I might add. The Browns have been getting they've been on the back to, on the wrong end of some terrible, terrible officiating. Uh yeah. Yeah. Um uh interesting tidbit about the Packers though. They seven and one at the house. I'm in agreement with you. I hope RB is listening. RB, the guy I work with, is a Packer. When I say he's a Packers fan, the man owns stock in cheese. You hear what I'm trying to tell you? He owns 18% in cheese factories all over the country. Okay, maybe not all over the country, but in Wisconsin for sure. The man is a Packers fan. Uh, I'm with you, though, Double J. I'm in agreement for sure. I think they've been the beneficiaries of some <laughs> favorable uh, laundry you know, like the muck eyes was against my canes. Anywho, we ain't gonna go down that road right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got the Packers, huh? No, you picking the Seahawks too? Mm, all right, brother Rich, what about you? Who you got? Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. When it comes down to it, Russell Wilson. Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm. I'm rolling with um and Double J. I want you to. You to uh, back me up on this or not. Beast Mode, that's one Marshawn Lynch. When he first got back with the Seahawks, he looked a little heavy. Did he look a little heavy to you? Well, you got to remember, every time you you would hear from the guy, he was in another country. He was living his best life. But he was working out still. Um, and maybe you've gotten accustomed to the, what I would call the, the today DA of the NFL in terms of the types of running backs that they have. They're not the big backs anymore. Oh um, yeah. Right. Got right. Small, fragile. So when you, when you see Chris Carson versus Marshawn Lynch, you know, look, he does look substantially bigger. Yeah, he so, does. Uh, but yes, I, I think give him give him two. You know, again, he's had, now he's got another week of, of practice in his system, a little less skittles, I would imagine. Um, and uh, I think he's going to continue to 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 do good things for them. I do. There were a couple plays there, just like, you know, over the weekend that it looked like vintage Marshawn Lynch. 
I mean, yeah, he was still he throwing did, he guys did. off of it. So yeah, he I was. I wish I could come off of the thrown pad yeah. and, and, you know, stiff arm someone. But, that's, yeah. you know, I, I'd get stiff armed. <laughs> and, and, you know, and let me throw this out there to all three of you guys, yes or no. You think if the Seahawks, should they find themselves in that same situation in this playoff game as they were in the Super Bowl, which they should have won at the one, do you think they hand the ball off to Marshawn Lynch this time, Brother Rich? Without a doubt. Double J? Oh, yeah. Gully? I don't know. Oh, boy. <laughs> because it's too – because it would be too, too obvious. obvious to make, yeah, that, to make that move. Yeah, yeah. I can't argue with you on that one. But, I mean, he might be that type of dude, though, man, even if you know it's coming. They might be ready for it. Yeah, yeah, but you but, know but what I'm saying? The thing. Wasn't it too obvious the last time? Wasn't that the point of the last time? That's exactly what we're talking <laughs> yeah. Because it was yeah. so obvious that they should have done it that it's like, okay, some things are like, okay, yeah. well, it's up to you to stop this. It's yeah. Yeah. Happens, yeah. But we're saying this guy yeah. is better than anything you're going to do in yeah. this moment. Yeah, they, they would have yeah. to do that. Yeah. They could just pass up another circumstance to show yeah. that you're obviously going to do what everyone thinks and understands you should do at that time. Yeah. And you know what, Brother Rich, was funny, you know, when we first kind of started doing this, we've had we've had discussions similar to and, and kind of said the same thing. At some point, especially in football, it comes down to the coach be on the sideline. He'd be like, um, they call the timeout and be like, coach, what's the play? It ain't no play. Go get me a yard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What you talking about? I call the timeout to let right. all y'all know, go get me a yard. You see what I'm trying to tell you? It ain't got nothing to do with how much money you make or how much money you don't make, how long your extension is, or whether you're going to get one, whether you're held out or not. Baby, this is for all the marbles, okay? You, Big Bubba, you, Big Johnson, all five of y'all combined weigh 14,000 pounds. You get what I'm trying to tell you? And we got a running back that weighs 800 pounds by itself. Go get me a yard. That's it. Ready? Break. You know, get on back out there. So, you know, I mean, ain't nothing to draw up on this one. Yeah. Give it to Marshawn Lynch at the one, baby, and let's see where this one go. Uh, you know what? I'll say this, too, about the NFL. You know, the NFL got its issues, no question about it. You know what I mean? Um, I'm kind of thinking about maybe adding this for a topic next week. I'm not sure, but I am going to throw it out here right now. This whole idea of the Rooney Rule is a farce, and I think it's about time we uncovered the fact that it's a farce due to the fact that, you know, and I don't know, he might be a good good coach or whatnot, but this judge guy that the Giants hired, and Eric B. Enemy can't get a shot. That's a story for another day, but I think we will be discussing that. But anyway, unlike the NBA, the NFL has still, despite its inadequacies here as of late, hard to choose from, want to see matchups, quote unquote, more often than not. Would you agree with that, Brother Rich? Absolutely. Double J? No argument here. Gully? I agree. I concur. Oh, okay. So, Gully, we'll stay with you. And here's the next question in regards to this whole NFL. What happens if there is an egregious, blown call in Super Bowl 54? What in the world does that do? Is Would that be the final crack in the NFL sh- in the shield? Would that be it? Is that the straw that's going to crumble? Because like most Def said, you know, no, what's, the, not at all. What's, the, what's the the one straw that broke the camel's back? Here's the secret. <laughs> the million other straws underneath it. You know, I'm trying to that type of deal. No, you don't think so? No. Right. No, no, no. If there's an egregious blown call in the in the Super Bowl, no, nah, it won't it won't crack it at all. Um, the, the, the dangerous part about it is it'll become not the straw that breaks it, but the straw by which the other ones are uh, – will be placed. Here's what I mean by that. If you think of an egregious blown call, it'd be just like the call that uh, spawned over the change of overtime rules, right? Uh, we're talking about the Saints versus Vikings all, all those years ago where the, uh, where the fans and the beloved Brett Favre fans were planning for him to have another shot. And because of the overtime rules, he didn't have that other shot in his career, you know, and that was in his second to last season in Minnesota was, uh, you know, was, uh, I guess, was bittersweet, but it 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 was the event that spurred the change in the overtime rules, not the fact that it had been unfair uh, all those years before. My point is this: a bad blown call in the NFL will be an instant rule change 
uh, the likes of which we've never seen and I think would be um, pretty traumatic in terms of the landscape of how the game is played. Yeah, too, sometimes, like I was saying about, about your boy earlier in the program, you know, when is enough enough? See, you keep on changing rules and changing rules and changing rules, and my gosh, all of a sudden, whatever it is that you was changing rules for us then got lost in the sauce. The fabric. You know how we say about these young youngins nowadays or these millennials or these new folk nowadays, and we say we got the expression us old heads do, so to speak, or those who've lived before. I mean, like, man, there ain't, ain't even no line to cross no more. They done erased the line. Everybody just out here running free, running free, running free, running free. Uh, Brother Rich, what happens if there is an egregious blown call in Super Bowl 54? Am I, am I right? Is this Super Bowl 54? It's a senior moment for y'all right quick. Double J, is it Super Bowl 54 or 64? Which one is it? Double J? Hopefully the best one ever. Is it Super, is Super Bowl 54 or is it, is it Super Bowl 64? I don't know what that is. Uh, Super Bowl 64. <laughs> the last time the Browns won an NFL championship. That's why I said 54 or 64. But anyway, what happens if there's an egregious blown call? I, I think that to use a political analogy, I think that the NFL is like Donald Trump. They could shoot somebody in the middle of Fifth Avenue and get away with it. I'll tell you why. I think that commercially the NFL has proven itself bulletproof with the egregious kind of thing that the NFL has gotten away with and continues to get away with, the CTE, the stuff, the uh, labor um, contracts that they are able to uh, just yeah. run over the players with. Yeah. Just different things that go on with them, and the league says that, and that the kind of money this league has generated, it, it says that. It's a, a blown call here to look, the league looked at, and everyone looked at what happened last year with New Orleans and the Rams, and there was so much discussion about that, and there's been so many other discussions back and forth. So all of that helps the NFL in one way or another. It helps their brand for them to be in the discussion where they'd be negative or positive. And this is an unfortunate thing, but it's an unfortunate reality of the commercialization of the league that it's all about the dollar and the bottom line, and it, it, it just helps them. So I don't know. I, I think the NFL is, is losing. Certainly it's lost. It's been losing popularity. But one or two uh, nudges this way or that way, I don't know if it's going to make much difference. Uh, yeah, I'll say this. I'll say one thing for certain. That if the NFL don't correct or don't get it fixed or don't correct it sooner rather than later, oh, yeah, it could be a problem, even for the big entity that the NFL is. This coach from Baylor, seven years, $60 million. And we all know that the NFL coaches' monies are guaranteed, but the players' monies are not. They need to do something about that. They need to do something. Because how many coaches that are not here or in Cleveland that the Browns are still paying? But you want to play. But who's, who's the day, Jay? Who's the day that's going to do something about that? And, and we're talking about the reality of what – now, you're, you're not going to get any argument from me that something needs to be done about that. But who's the day that does something about that? The owners certainly are not going to do anything about that. The NFL labor committees are not going to – the, the players' the negotiation uh, – uh, committees are not going to do anything about that. The players you don't think so? are not willing to do anything about you that. You don't think the next CBA they're going to be? because here's, here's what we know. Here's, well, 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 we would have hoped so, but here's what we can have. We have been able to rely on thus far. That thus far, with the whole world looking on, and they themselves knowing that they're treated as second-class citizens in the in that sports labor market, and they're looking at all their colleagues in professional uh, sports, all their professional colleagues are raking in multi-millions of dollars for guaranteed contracts, and they're playing the most dangerous sport and continue to play it under contracts that you wouldn't even ask a McDonald's worker to work, work under if he or she had to go into a dangerous circumstance or situation. So, so, so to, to, to wonder whether or not they're going to strike, we have to go back over all the old issues. Did they save enough money? Will they break the line? Will other players want to come in and play? Are the owners just have the owners built the brand tight enough that the NFL continues to be a sport of teams and logos as opposed to individuals? So you got to deal with all these kind of conversations that they're having behind closed doors, and one wonders whether or not the NFL players themselves they don't even line up on their own teams with one another. You had a whole Pittsburgh Steelers team go down 
player after player, fratricidal conflict, whether or not we're going to stand out, whether who's going to raise their hand, who's going to kneel, who's going to stand up, who's going to poke that lip out. Come on, man. I don't, I don't trust the NFL players to do. I trust them to do exactly what they've been doing, and that is to play the game. Yeah. Well, that's all fair. Them all fair points. Yeah, I just I just got a big issue with that. You know what I mean? I After hearing that, my Mike Rule or whatever his name is from Baylor, you give a college guy seven years, 60 million. Oh, man, I bet not ever hear nobody say nothing about a player's con- salaries. No player. Even the ones I don't like in all leagues. Because I'm telling you right now, I got something for that ascot. Excuse my French fries. Or do you want a hamburger with them French fries? Because that's what I'm coming with. Don't have no, you don't, uh, this is for the list folks that's listening out there. Don't strike up no conversation with me about no player and whether a player is worth whatever he ain't worth or whatnot. You're going to give a guy that ain't proved jack at the NFL level because don't get it twisted. The NFL is a whole lot different than college. A whole lot different. And we've seen some NFL experienced guys that, especially in the case of the Browns, the Josh McDaniels and the Jim Schwartz, all of a sudden they came out of nowhere. I mean, yeah, they got experience, but what do it mean? Schwartz was 59, and, I mean, 21. And look at the job he gets, Jay. Look at the job. Look that's, at that's the right. big yeah, job he gets. I'm not, I'm, yeah, I, yeah that's, I mean, come on now. Come on, yeah, don't talk to me about nothing about no players that ain't worth not, what they ain't worth. All of them. Now, I'll sit there and talk about your game and talk about you a lame, I, all that all day long. But when it comes to getting your Skrillzilla from the guy that, that who, who write the checks, as we've said on this platform on many, many occasions, Every professional sports franchise owner, and some in most cases, not most cases, some more than others, the teams that they own are akin to the toy, or they look at it like the toy your kid get for Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas. The next year is a done deal. They these these this is not. This is not their livelihood, man. This is a luxury for them. These dudes wake up like, oh, I think I'll go buy me an NFL team today. Oh, okay. But the guys on the other side, they like, man, I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I gotta go, I gotta do the head knocker drill. But you just had a concussion last week. But yeah, but if I don't, I'm gonna lose my spot. Then I can't be. Oh, okay, anyway. I mean, we should have had Herm on this one for this show today. But anywho, we'll get back at it. Uh if you're up and around you and you're out and about and you want to give us a shot, we're in the last portion of the P-Roll Gram. The number to call is area code 267-687-0026. That number again is area code 267-687-0026. All right, let's talk some boxing, if we can call it that nowadays, and in particular, the heavyweight division. Now, you and I, uh, you all know, but for those who are out there just now tuning in or if you're just now joining us, every now and again, I do a guest appearance via phone on this show in Chicago called The Parlay. And, you know, I used to be, these. they were called the Triple Threat Show some years ago. And I was an NBA analyst for these guys. Real good guys, too, man. They, they got a hoop league. I, I, I got the, I'm, that's one on my bucket list to get to shy this year. Because they didn't invite me a thousand times to come up there and kick it with them. In particular, my cat, Tony Lopez, T-Lo. He's the main uh, host for this show called The Parlay. They used to talk all sports when it was Triple Threat. But now that they're the parlay, they do, you know, talk some of the other stuff. But primarily the focus is boxing. And, he, of course, he has Kendall Gill, former Illinois standout with Marcus Liberty. I think he played with Marcus Liberty in them. But you know Kendall Gill from playing with the Hornets with Muggsy and Larry Johnson and Zoe Morning and so on and so forth. So I join these Absolutely. guys on the show every now and again. And, it's, it's, man, it's always a blast. Matter of fact, I got to tell him, T-Lo, to send me the, uh, the last audio, and I'll share it with you all at some point. But anyway... We've been going back and forth, all right, T-Lo, I, and KG, about, you know, the boxing and the state of boxing. You know, we've had a few discussions on boxing here on this on the program here. And my thing is, you know, everybody wants the heavyweight division to be what the heavyweight division was. Shucks, when Lennox Lewis was in it, okay, when Haseen Rockman was in it, okay, it definitely ain't can't be what when Ike Abuchi was in it. But, you know, a lot of folks don't know who Ike Abuchi was because Google don't go that far, I guess, or it don't come up that fast. I don't know. But anyway, Tyson Fury, don't ask me what belt he hold or what belt he don't hold because I couldn't tell you. 
But what I can tell you is <laughs> what he had to say about some of the other most notable or household names in the division. And here's what he had to say. I thought it was interesting because I, when I saw the post, I saw it on Facebook, I immediately tagged my man Tilo in it. You know what I'm saying? Because my contention is the heavyweight division is a farce. These guys are not boxers. They're brawlers. And it might be the heavyweight division in namesake, but to, but to try to put it in the same light or give it the same weight that the heavyweight division we grew up watching is, you can't do it. And, I, again, everybody talking about why you keep always referencing when you grew up. I'm not saying my era was better, but we was more durable. And you're right. It wasn't better, the era maybe. But we did it better. I'm just saying, don't be a bad weather. Anyway, uh, Tyson Fury had this to say on Deontay Wilder. Limited boxing ability, but makes up for it with all that power. You agree or disagree, Gully? I I disagree. Um, I don't know. I don't know about him being limited boxing ability. I don't think. I don't think so. I think that Tyson. I think that uh, Wilder's uh, issue. My issue with Wilder is that um, he uh, plays. I think with the, with his opponents too much. He's not he's not a uh, Prince Nassim type flamboyant, but I think he plays. And sometimes I see him actually jump at the punches, and this is it's really weird for me. And I think he's doing that because he's really trying to make a point that he's that he's that he's that much stronger and more powerful. You know, I, that's my problem with uh, uh with Deontay Wilder. Um, but uh, Tyson Fury was right; he makes up with it with all that power because clearly Tyson Fury caught one. Yeah. No, no stuff. He did. Uh, but I'm going to say this, too, right quick, before I get to Double J and Brother Rich on this. When you, come, when you think about the sweet science and you watch Deontay Wilder, do you think Deontay Wilder, and I'm being realistic, if you do, fine, but straight up truth, do you think Deontay Wilder, and this ain't no knock against him, it's just the conversation surrounding him like, He's, he's some type of special that we ain't never seen before. Do you think he could outbox Lennox Lewis? Gully? Because, see, boxing ain't just people getting got this in their mind that boxing nowadays is just because you put on gloves and get in a ring. And Jimmy Buffer, whoever it is, the, the ring announcer now, showtime, oh, da, 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 oh, whatever they say when they announce guys coming in. You know what I mean? That, that's not boxing. Do you think Deontay Wilder could outbox Lennox Lewis? I don't think. You say but, that. Say that again. Ah, uh, that's not. Uh, uh-uh. uh. That's not. A, no, this is not an if and or but. Do you think Deontay Wilder could outbox Lennox Lewis? Nah, that's all right. Nah, no, 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 no. And it goes twelve. Lennox Lewis gets the decision. No, uh, uh, no, uh, 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 I didn't. I, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. No, no I didn't no, ask no, for no. An explanation. I didn't ask for yeah, no explanation. No, it's boxing. So you can't say, <laughs> no, nah, it's boxing. No, 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 it's boxing. Do you think so like Deontay Wilder could outbox what? Lennox Lewis? Okay, well, let me pose it this way then. Okay, no. I, okay that's, well, I mean, my gosh, it took us 45 minutes to get there. Because I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying if it's, tw- if it's a 12, if, the, if he goes the distance, Lennox Lewis wins that. But I don't know if he goes the distance because he's just that powerful enough and tall. Okay. You okay. Then remember. I, okay, hold on. See, you got to remember, when you say Lennox Lewis, you got to remember one thing about Lennox Lewis. I've seen it myself. Lennox Lewis got knocked out by the guy having a nervous breakdown in the ring. I, we know that. Well, I mean, who, knocked him what, out what, what, out Listen, I, I see many. Oliver McCall knocked him out of the head and was crying before the race. So that's what I, I'm saying. I know that. And Oliver McCall was just on the parlay last week. I get it. But that don't, that ain't, I, listen, but, but, but that, that doesn't lend itself or lead or, or go along with whether or not if he could, Wilder could outbox Lennox Lewis. Some of the, Manny Pacquiao is still considered being talked about as winning 65,000 belts and 22 weight classes and all of that and whatnot, and his face hit the canvas after seeing Marquez for the 15th time. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So that means some of the, some of your, except for Floyd, of course, but even Ali. You know, I, I mean, Ken Norton broke Ali's jaw. You understand know, you know what I'm trying to tell you? He said, dude hit me, felt like I got kicked by a mule. So, I mean, some of your best known boxers, 
Oh, I mean, they didn't, you know what I mean? That's the sport, man. You win some, you lose some. I get, you know what I mean? But, okay, I, let me throw another fighter in, in there different. Double J. Do you think when you watch Deontay Wilder, can he outbox Riddick Bo? Oh, I'd like to See, now I'm going to start dancing around these questions. Like yes, Kelly yeah, did. dance, 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 dance. Go ahead, dance. Dance, like back in the Old West. I'm when trying I, to go the distance here. <laughs> yeah, oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Brother Rich. Uh, you know, oh, go ahead. I don't think so. I, 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 I don't think so. I, I, <laughs> okay, do, okay. But he's built, you know what it is? He's built just like those guys. But I don't believe fundamentally that that's he all did, I'm that, driving that at. The same class. When you see, when you think of boxing in the heavyweight division, I could be a Bucci. I mentioned he couldn't beat I could be a Bucci. I'm telling you that. I don't care how, how hard he hit, and he hit hard, but he couldn't beat I could be a Bucci. Could not do it. Folk, the heavyweight division better be glad I could be a Bucci went to jail, to prison. They better be glad. I'm telling you that right now. Brother Rich, I'll throw another boxer in there. Do you think Deontay Wilder, when you watch him, are you reminded of the sweet science? And if so, could he outbox Joe Frazier? He could not box any of the people you mentioned. But here's my approach I want to answer you with this time. And I'm glad that you mentioned it. You set it up for me to answer it this way. And I'll go back to my own, own, my old line with you. The reason he can't outbox them is because there are no more Angelo Dundee's. There are no more Emmanuel okay. Stewart. We don't have the kind of trainers anymore that they don't do. You're talking about people that were uh, uh, custom model taught Mike Tyson how to box. He taught him the science of these. Are, mm-hmm. the, when you're talking about Lennox Lewis and when you're talking about these, they were George Frazier was taught how to box. They were taught how to fight, how the science of what they were doing. Oh, so you said George Frazier, but not things that you're talking about. Yeah, you said George, George Frazier, but you meant Joe. But now you're speaking to George, George Foreman. Joe Foreman, Joe Frazier. Right, George, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I knew Foreman, you was going, Foreman. right, 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 right. They, these were, they, were, they, were taught, they were all taught how to box. So that's what you're talking about that's missing in today's game. These, these are brawlers, but they're, they're, not, they're not dealing with the science of the game. That's what you're talking about, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, here's what uh, Fury had to say about Anthony Joshua. Just a big bum. He eats right hands for fun. <laughs> you you agree with that, Brother Rich? Absolutely. I think Absolutely. so, too. He's a guy, Anthony Joshua is, he looks the part, but he go down. He, he, he go down too easily, man. He, 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 he fall too easily. He do, man. He, he, he like one of them dudes you see that lift. He doesn't lift. even carry himself as a fighter. Yeah, no, he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, he just carries himself like a yeah. big, tall, handsome guy. Yeah. He doesn't need to be, go be a model or something. He's not yeah, a fighter. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he like one of them guys you see lift weights all the time, but all they do is work on their upper body. But legs look like twigs. You know what I'm saying? One good, listen, one good hit on the chin, and you falling with all them muscles. Here, let me get my pen cushion. <laughs> let some of the air out of them fake arms. Uh, Double J, do you agree with that on Anthony Joshua, what he had to say about Joshua? It, well, Fury is his furious right now. Of course. Uh, of course he so, is. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to, you know, again, for for him to make that claim, he's not the one holding the belt. But this is boxing. It's all about posturing now. Sports in general is about posturing now. Throw something out there so people have something oh, to talk about and run yeah. with. But, yeah, he's not holding the belt. But guess what, though? We said this before, too. I don't even think the belts really are a big deal anymore. It's too many of them. You got the Kellogg Frosted Flake belt. You got the Captain Crunch belt. You got the Skittles belt. You got the Ring Magazine belt. Hell, I even saw, excuse my French, I was at Walmart the other day and saw a belt. It's called the Rollback Special. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. They got a belt. There was two, two chicks in Walmart scrapping. I'm going to get the belt. I'm going to get the belt. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just in here for the cookies. <laughs> okay, I'm just in here for the cookies. Thank you. 
So what? So you're saying they they have as many belts as college college bowl games? Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, was, they got as many belts in boxing as they do Division One college football teams. One hundred and sixty thousand of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Gully, uh, you g- agree with what he had to say about Joshua? Yeah, um, Joshua has been has hasn't seen any of the guys that would help substantiate his career. Meanwhile, Wilder and Fury have have met competition, you know, to at least uh, back up their words, to back up their assessments and, and them being kings in the, in the division. Unfortunately, that has not happened for Joshua, and it seems like it's rather deliberate. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't have a room to disagree with what uh, Tyson uh, Tyson Fury says uh, about okay. Joshua. Yeah, uh, brother Rich. Here's what he had to say about Andy. Pillsbury Doughboy Ruiz Jr. He's just an <laughs> he, he cuz that's what it looked like to me uh against uh Joshua anywho. He's just an average boxer. Hand speed <laughs> just don't cut it. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See that's what I mean when I box a dude said I look, I know heavyweights can't throw punches as long as just as long as the the uh, Marco Antonio Barreras or the Livingston Brambles or the Greg Hogans or the Mickey Ward Gotties or the Floyd Mayweathers because they're not they heavier guys. That's obvious. But Ika Biabucci could mix it up. He wasn't a heavyweight, but Joe Calzaghe could mix it up. He was a heavyweight technically. Roy Jones could mix it up. Who was that he fought when he went up to 199 pounds, Gully? Who was that he fought? And he and he closed both the guy's eyes. Who was that he fought? Wasn't that guy's name Ruiz too? Oh, when he, wait a minute. Yeah, what? John Ruiz. Was it John Ruiz? Sure was. John Ruiz. Yeah, well, John Ruiz. Yeah, when yeah he, won, he won the yeah. title. He won, he won the title. title. He, won he won a heavyweight, heavyweight title. Heavyweight exactly. You know what I'm saying? Listen. Sure was. Sure was. Listen. In his prime, I know I'm jumping out the plane with no parachute. Okay? I'm a little crazy. My meds ain't kicked in yet. But this is, I'm Bernard Hopkins in his prime would beat half the heavyweights in the heavyweight division today. In his prime, the executioner. Yeah, I said it. The executioner. No, no doubt about that. The no executioner that. in his no prime, in his prime. And don't come down his side. Well, you probably can't. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, you, you, uh, Andy Ruiz, uh, Pillsbury Doe, boy. His hand speed just don't cut it. That's what I'm trying to tell you, man. These dudes don't throw hands. Holyfield threw hands. Tyson threw hands. Shoot, Buster Douglas threw hands before he started eating everybody what was in everybody else's hands. Um, Ken Norton Sr., Larry Holmes, George Foreman. We know Ali, uh, Frazier. Uh, what was the – Tony Tucker. I mean, it was just a lot of heavyweights that – like I said, Riddick Bo, did I say Holyfield already? Yeah, I could be a Bucci. These dudes was mi- they used to mix it up, man. Not as long as, of course, the, the lower weight classes, but they used to mix it up like the lo- the lower weight classes a time or two. Man, come on, man. Them fights Lennox Lewis and even when when um Hasin because Hasin Rahman knocked Lennox Lewis out, didn't he? Caught him with a good caught him with a good one. Then Lennox came back and put that knot on um. I seen Rockman's forehead, boy. I was like, "Ooh, not today!" I look like it, hey. But yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with him on this Ruiz thing. I'm not seeing the sweet science at all. And then this is what he had to say on Luis Ortiz. He's 147 years old. <laughs> I think he may have been good, been a good man 30 years ago. Double J, what you say? Did you weigh on in on Andy Ruiz? My bad. Pillsbury Doughboy, senior moment. Tacos and tequila, say no more. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> okay, you talking about Ruiz or you talking about Ortiz? <laughs> Got you. Oh, that was for Ruiz. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, you know, what a, what a disgrace yeah. to, to be a belt holder. You know, uh, if you win it, you know, under those circumstances the, in the first bout, but how dare you? What an insult to the sport to to come into the second fight and admit after you've taken out that you didn't prepare 
correctly. That, oh, my gosh. You know, we could see it, as, as I stated. Tacos and tequila. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for more so for Anthony Joshua. Huh? Yeah. Well, it, and, and it could get worse. It could get worse. Look why Tyson Fury was upset. Because of how the the ranking system goes when you move up a class and you oh, have a yeah, win. Yeah, yeah. You're the newcomer. You jump. I mean, that's like the WWE. You know, oh, here's this new guy. And he's making a name for himself, and now he's got a title shot at SummerSlam. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah, but but wait a minute. One thing I will give the WWE and WWF and NWO, and I don't know all of the organizations that are out there now. I will give them credit. For one thing, which is probably the most important thing, since day one, I'm talking all the way back to the Iron Sheik, Junkyard Dog, Hulk Hogan, uh, the Killer Bees, they let you know out of the gate, this ain't real. <laughs> okay? <laughs> this ain't real. So we're not going to even try to sell y'all on the real. Okay. <laughs> all right. So it's all good. Fans is, they, they in this crowd, they're selling out. But this other stuff here. Man, you got folks burning jerseys because of you know <laughs> you got folks setting stuff on fire. I mean, what what what's I mean, what's 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 the world coming to? What's the world coming to? Gully. I mean, is he right? Tim Donahue, he tried telling you that that it wasn't. Oh, right. let's please let us not go there because <laughs> I read the book. <laughs> yeah, I read the book <laughs> on more than one occasion. Uh, Gully on Luis Ortiz is Fury right? He's 147 years old. I think he may have been good. You know, been a Good man, thirty years ago. Well, I mean, check the date of birth. You know, the idea he's just basically calling him an old heavyweight. But they got to do with getting in the ring. Did they ever fight each other? Because it sounds like that should be the next fight. Because sounds like it to me. What he said wasn't the. Yeah, it wasn't the. It, 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 what did he say? He just said that he was old. Okay. Well, Foreman was old. Ask Michael Moore how that went. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just a, a, amazed at how the conversation surrounding boxing in general, especially, again, the heavyweight division, folks want to make it to seem like it's, it's uh, you know, it's got that pop. You know what I mean? That it is what it was. You know what I mean? It's all pomp and circumstance. I'm telling you, it's, it's not as attractive as, especially with the price tags that go along with seeing championship fights. Even in the day and age of social media, Boxing is still, boy, they don't get no more crooked than that. Oh, and by the way, from my understanding, um, I don't know if it's in the works or not, but I'm hearing things from some folk I talk to. Again, I don't have sources. I just know people uh, that this Spence and and Bud might actually go down, but I think it's going to be like next year, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe at the end of this year, maybe. But from my understanding, it's Bud and, and Spence might go down. You know what I mean? So we'll see. I, I look forward to seeing that because, you know, Bud, don't, Bud ain't no ain't no chump. But, yeah, uh, Brother Rich, what say you about this Luis Ortiz? He's 147 years old. I think he may have been a good man 30 years ago. Is Fury tripping? Again, these are not – we don't take these people – again, we don't take these people serious as, as heavyweight fighters. I think what you said is, to us early as you brought up the subject, of, these are heavyweights in size. They are heavyweights in weight. But in terms of their technical abilities as heavyweight boxers and fighters, we don't see them in any in any light that would remind us that they're not reminiscent of any fight of the great, not even the average fighters. And as we said, we can think of many fighters of different weight classes that could come up and technically wise. I, I, when you said that about the execution of the Philly the Philly blaster coming through, we know just hard alone he's gonna tuck you good night. He's tuck all these boys good night real quick. So it's no doubt about that. Not, not at all. Indeed. Fellas, well, as always, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all joining me on the pre program today. That's all we got and all the time we got for the now. Gully, uh, yeah, I'm glad you joined us, Double J. No more laughing in the background next week. Hopefully we'll get to your Browns, you and Brother Richard's Browns. I know y'all waiting so eagerly with your popcorn in front of the TV to see or hear Stephen A. soliloquy about Josh McDaniel, Jim Schwartz, Bill Parcells. From my understanding, I think Jimmy Haslam even contacted Vince Lombardi from the grave. So, you know, who knows? Not even Paul Brown, you think? <laughs> I don't know why. But, yeah, sooner or later the Browns will find a head coach, I'm sure. You know, you know maybe before uh, – how old is your son, Double J? 
You have to slander the Browns before you Nine. get there. Nine. Nine. So maybe maybe the Browns might find a head coach before your son graduates from college. Maybe. Just maybe. Maybe. But we don't know yet. <laughs> the jury's still out on that. But it's 44 years and counting. And on that note, it's been fun, but we got to run. We appreciate y'all for listening. Don't forget to check us out right here on the Spreaker.com network. You go to the search box, type in the shot report, or you can check us out on our Facebook fan page, Twitter, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Give us a follow when you're over there, or you can go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and any other social media sites we might be on or might not be on. Just find us, baby. Find us. And, of course, you can always send us an email, theshotreport365 at gmail.com. As always, let us know what you think about what we discuss or add any topics you'd like for us to discuss. And if that don't work, Google it. For my mans, be rich. And Double J up on the north side and all those who follow us and support us. Oh, and my man D. Gully, too, by the way. We say thank you. I'm Barbershop J, and you'll be listening to the Shop Report. Oh, and remember, the next time y'all want to know what's really going on, man, come to the shop. Walk-ins are always welcome. Holla! Holla!